there's something that I kind of forgot to do in the previous um, um, previous virtual class session that I promised that I would do. Looking at this uh, when I launched this reminded me of the thing that I promised that I uh, forgot to do. So let me actually do that. It's going to take another um, three or four minutes. And it actually uh, touches on energy and momentum concepts. So this was the last session when I used the uh, FAT simulation. Um, so um, at the end of this session, I was demonstrating uh, one of the, I just uh, started up one of the things, uh, let me see here, social title, okay. Uh, I think when I was playing it through, it was around here. So I showed um, um, different uh, ways this block can be pushed. So this top graph was, um, the this graph was with, uh, uh, with a smaller mass and this was when the block had double the original mass. And you saw with how the block got pushed that this had more than half the speed. And I think at that session, I both asked and gave away the answer that both this lighter block and this heavier block, they had the same kinetic energy. And I was saying how I could know that so surely uh, without doing any calculation. And in fact, if you do do the calculation, what you'll find is that speed here is about one over square root of the speed here. And when you go through the kinetic energy formula, you square the velocities, multiply to the mass, then yeah, you'll find that those are the same. And back then I hinted that I knew that just because of how it was set up. And now I can, now that you've covered the momentum, uh, I can uh, cover the second half of that. So let me just, uh, wait, what did, the, oops, uh, sorry, <laughs> undoing it to did something crazy. Okay, so let me um, bring this back and, um, oops, let me, um, so let me, show you the second half of that demo. Uh, this is a, one of those things that uh, might be helpful in problem solving because it relates to some of the things, oh wait, I need to kill its velocity. It relates to some of the things that people sometimes forget about or um, sometimes it's coded, uh, the information is encoded in the question wording ever so subtly that um, unless you are reading it very carefully that people sometimes miss. So uh, let me ask you two different questions that sound very similar, but um, but are actually setting up the situation differently and the answers end up being different. So I'm just gonna set the material properly so that this is back to its original mass of one kilogram. And I don't remember thruster property was T, okay. Okay, so um someone could ask a time speed okay someone could ask this question or um uh, set this up so um you are pushing two different masses two different blocks of different mass uh, between two um two uh, posts or over some distance and the question says you push them into equal force over the distance and the question asks you at the end of that push, which block has um, which block has greater momentum or greater energy? So the last time I did this demo, um, I was imagining someone would ask you uh, which block has greater kinetic energy. And um, let me just redo the plot so that I have something there. So this would be one with the lighter mass. Here, so try to stop it around here when the front reaches there. And let me go back and uh, I'm going to make the mass now heavier and do the same experiment. Just to mute my phone. Let me restart to this. Find this correct. Uh, 
And the question might ask, uh, which of the two blocks have greater kinetic energy or do they have the same kinetic energy? And the answer is they have the same kinetic energy. Now, suppose someone asks you, um, which of the two blocks have greater momentum? Then you might... Um, be able to quickly calculate from the things you know about momentum, you know, P is equal to mv, that this heavier block that's heavier by a factor of two should have greater momentum since its speed is uh, it's greater than half of this. So, so you might be able to figure it out that way. Now, let me change the, or change the wording of the question slightly. So in the previous question, the hypothetical imaginary question, I had it set up so that the two different blocks are being pushed between these two endpoints over the same distance, pushing with the same amount of force by using this thruster. Now I'm going to change the wording, change the question wording ever so slightly, so that instead of the two blocks being pushed over the same distance, instead this time the question is, the two blocks are being pushed for the same amount of time. And let me do a simulation of that here uh, for the, the second heavier block being pushed for the same amount of time as the lighter block. And let's see what happens. Same amount of time. There it is. Now, when you see it in the simulation, I think it's easier for you to see um, why you get a different answer. Because now, if someone asks you which of the two blocks have greater kinetic energy, then it's the lighter block that has the greater kinetic energy. And if someone asks you which of the two blocks have the same, uh, have the greater momentum, then this time the answer is they have the same momentum. And it comes down to a very subtle difference um, when you are looking at, um, when you're looking at the, so this was the quantity that we are looking at in chapters uh, 7, 8, and 9. Um, when you are looking at change in the energy or change in the kinetic energy, the physical quantity that most directly relates to change of energy is amount of work being done. And the definition of work is force, the vector, the product with the displacement, let me actually use delta here. And now that we have covered the momentum, we can talk about the change of momentum. So if you are looking at change of momentum, which I think your textbook uses the letter J for impulse, um, or sorry, I'm never gonna get used to this. I'm just gonna spell out impulse. Um, change of momentum is related to impulse, which is defined as force times, not a dot product, but a scalar product with the duration of time. Uh, you know, product by a scalar factor. Sorry, the scalar product is a very confusing <laughs> phrase. So when you look at change of energy and change of momentum, they are, <laughs> they are really the quantities. So that's how sometimes you can get some uh, um, I guess two situations, they look similar, but are different. Different enough that um, when people are not paying attention, I can get them. So you can, I think once it's all spelled out this way, you can see it more easily. So even the same amount of force, if you want the amount of energy change to be the same, then yeah, you would keep the displacement the same. If you want the change of momentum the same, then um, then you would keep the duration of time the same. And as you change other quantities like a mass or whatever, um, or, or you might be changing what other forces might be present and um, keeping one the same, keeping the distance the same doesn't necessarily mean keeping the time interval the same. All that's kind of captured in this graph. And this is one of the things I like about the simulation, which is that sometimes when we hear the word description and just trying to think through in our head, sometimes we forget these details. 
simulation kind of lays it out. So in some sense, it makes things a little bit boring because it <laughs> picks out all the uh, tricky situations, the things that might surprise some people. 